All right. Well, let's get started here. So I just have a few examples on quadratic equations. So what is a quadratic equation? So you remember um, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. It's a quadratic equation. Here we're assuming that the coefficients a, b, and c are real numbers. with a not equal to zero. So if you're solving this equation, what we can do is we can divide by a, and that gives us x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals to zero. And then we can solve this by completing the square. Um, so this is x plus b over 2a squared uh, minus b squared over um, 2a quantity squared plus c over a equal to zero, which um, we can, uh, let's see here, then that gives me um, x plus b over 2a quantity squared minus Use your imagination a little bit here. We can rewrite that as the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by um, 2a quantity squared. So a little sneaky step right there, but all I did was to make a common denominator of 2a squared. So when I make that 2a squared, that brings a, um, I need a 4 times a here, which gives me a 4ac up stop. But then I got a minus on the b squared, so I factored this out to, basically the, the point is, wow, it's right over here, b over 2a squared plus c over a. Rather this is minus b squared um, plus 4ac over 2a quantity squared which then um, factoring a minus out, minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a quantity squared, like that, which gives me, um, then I just rewrote b squared minus 4ac as the square root of b squared minus 4ac squared, which then gave me this pattern here, which is the difference of squares, which then gives me x plus b over 2a um, plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a times x plus b over 2a minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a equal to zero. So then we find that either x is equal to minus b um, over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now it turns out that this whole calculation still makes sense if a and b and c are complex numbers. Um, but in particular, the, the details of the complex mathematics doesn't matter to us here, but the, the point is that this calculation is still legitimate if the thing under the square root ends up being negative. Um, so what I've boxed at the bottom, of course, the quadratic formula, which I'll write again up here for, um, for our reference. So this says x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So this is the quadratic formula. All right. Now, <clears throat> I don't usually use the quadratic formula directly um, because it's just kind of an ugly formula and it's much nicer to go through completing the square for examples. Um, and, and so like what is the quadratic formula? It is just derived from completing the square. 
Um, that's really what quadratic formula is in some sense completing the square. So, <clears throat> all right, so let me, uh, a little bit more terminology here. Let me point out some things. So if, um, so b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant. the discriminant, it discriminates what kind of solution we have. And so there are three cases. Case number one, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. Case two, b squared minus 4ac equals to zero. Case three, b squared minus 4ac less than zero. Those are the four cases, the three cases rather. And so case one is um, distinct, distinct real roots. Case two is a repeated root and it's real. And case three, we get a complex conjugate pair. of roots. All right. Now, I'll show you an example um, of each of these. And um, we'll look at how to, uh, a couple different things. We'll look at both how to solve it and also how to factor it in each case. So um, example one. All right. So. Um, here it is, x squared um, plus, let's say, you know, uh, 4x um, uh, minus uh, 11. All right, what are the solutions to this? So if we, if we choose to use the, um, the quadratic formula, we can look at the discriminant, right? So b squared minus 4ac, what's that equal to? Well, first of all, we need to look at this quadratic and identify a equals 1, b equals 4, c equals minus 11, all right? Um, so b squared minus 4ac is what? Um, I mean, I don't actually have to calculate that directly, um, but I think it's a good practice to calculate b squared minus 4ac as a warm up for the formula. Um, I, I think that one of the things students go wrong in is trying to do the whole quadratic formula all at once. Um, so it's a lot of steps in one calculator move, you know. Anyway, b squared minus 4ac is, uh, in this case, 16 minus 4 times 1 times minus 11. So that's 16 plus uh, 44, which is 60. Aha, so this means that we're in case 1. All right, so what are the solutions? The solutions are x equals 2 uh, minus b, which is minus 4, plus or minus the square root. Let me write it out symbolically here to start with, sorry. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. All right, so for this problem, that is minus 4 plus or minus, as we worked out already, the square root is 60 divided by 2. Okay, so my answer is minus 2 plus or minus 1 half the square root of 60. But the square root of 60 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 15 which is 2 times the square root of 15. So the 2's cancel here and just leave us plus or minus the square root of 15. So there you go. There's the solutions um, via the quadratic formula. Um, let me illustrate also how to find the same solutions using completing the square. 
So <clears throat> this problem completing the square, here's how you do it. We have x squared plus 4x minus 11 is equal to x plus 2 quantity squared minus 4 minus 11 equals to 0. But we can trade that for x plus 2 squared equals to 15. So x plus 2 is plus or minus the square root of 15. So x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 15. Now, I'm not saying which one is better or worse. I'm just saying that you could go either way, right? Um, I personally prefer completing the square as opposed to using the formula. Uh, all right. So let's look at another example. Yeah. Make sure it shows up on the camera here. Yeah, we should be okay. I'm going to zoom in just a bit. There we go. There's example one. Let's look at example two. So example two, we'll look at oh, I don't know, um, 3x squared um, minus 6x um, plus 3 equals to 0. Okay, so if I just use the quadratic formula directly, what do I get? x equals to, you know, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, right? Okay, so what is that? That is 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times 3 times 3, all divided by 2 times 3. So we get x is equal to 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. Because notice that the discriminant in this case, right here, is giving us the square root of 0, which is 0. So we're in case 2. This is the repeated root case. There's just one solution to the quadratic equation, right? Um, now, um, if I was to be smarter in doing this problem, what I would do instead was I would take the problem I'm given. I would divide by 3. That would give me x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals to 0. And then I would factor, which would then tell me x equals to 1. So quite clearly, this is not a wise way to do this problem. This is a much smarter way to find x equals to 1 as the solution. All right. And um, also, sometimes we ask you to solve the equation. Other times we ask you to factor the polynomial, right? So completing the square is much closer to factoring already. You know, you can always solve the quadratic equation and then use the zeros that you find from the formula, I mean the quadratic formula, to, to, to factor, to go back and factor using those numbers. But um, man, it's just so much easier to just complete the square. OK. so. Um, Completing the square was just factoring here, but let's look at example three. Example three. Suppose we look at x squared minus 4x plus 5 equal to 0. Let's solve this equation. All right, so if I use the quadratic formula, I get x is equal to, you know, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac 
over 2a. All right, but what's that equal to here? So here a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 4, c is equal to 5. So we get 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 times 5, all divided by, well, 2. So this gives me 2 plus or minus 1 half times the square root of 16 minus 20 is minus 4. Now the square root of minus 4, we can think of, I mean, in terms of this, the square root of minus 4 is equal to the square root of minus 1 times the square root of 4, which is equal to i times 2. So this is really 2 plus or minus 1 half of 2i. So the 2's cancel, and we're left with 2 plus or minus i. So that is how to use the quadratic formula in case 3. Case 3, we have a conjugate pair of solutions, 2 plus i, 2 minus i, right? Um, now, once again, we can complete the square, right? We could complete the square rather than using the quadratic formula. Let's look at how that goes for example 3. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 5 equals 2. So I take half of the, the term with x, which is 2. I square that, right? At that point, what have I done? I have added a 4. So 2 squared is 4. So I have to subtract. 4, to be fair, plus 5. All right, then that gives me x plus 2 quantity squared plus 1. All right, when I do that, I, I, I have at this point learned, oh, okay, well, this is actually case 3. This is a irreducible quadratic if we're not allowed to use complex numbers. But we are allowed to use complex numbers in Chapter 7. So we can shade that 1 is minus, 1 is equal to minus i squared. So this is really x plus 2 squared minus i squared, but then that's by the difference of squares, x plus 2 plus i times x plus 2 minus i. So there you go. We have factored the quadratic for one thing, and then if we set that equal to 0, we can use the factor theorem, and we can see x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus i from that. All right. So... Yeah, I mean, you should know the quadratic formula. You should be able to use it, but um, it's also good to know how to complete the square instead. Um, all right. So those are the three cases. Um, let's look at some more examples. And um, actually, let's, let's just do a, a quick review here of graphing. Let's talk about the graph of a quadratic. So what can you say about the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c? All right. So first of all, here's some generic comments. Number one, if a is greater than 0, it opens up. If um, a is less than 0, it opens down. In other words, it looks kind of like, like this, or it looks kind of like that. All right? Two. All right, so x equals to minus b over um, 2a is the axis of symmetry. For the, for the parabola. Um, so 3, since y is equal to a, right, times x minus b over 2a squared um, 
plus c minus b squared over 4a squared. All right. Uh, no, no parentheses here, just like that. Sorry. So that that's just the, the algebra that we just went through for the quadratic formula. Um, this is a formula that is this is equal to that. In other words, what I've underlined in green up here is equal to what I have down here. And so this reveals that um, b over 2a comma c minus b squared over 4a squared is the vertex of the parabola. See, because when you put in x equal to b over 2a, um, oh, that's supposed to be a plus here, my bad. So when you put in minus b over 2a into that, you get 0. And at that same step, y is equal to whatever's left over here. So that makes this the vertex of the parabola. All right. Um, what else can I tell you? For um, if you know x plus and minus are the zeros, our solutions of you know ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero, then x plus plus x minus is also equal to minus b over 2a. Um, I should, that's not quite right. So if we take x, x plus plus x minus divide by 2, we get minus b over 2a. In other words, the vertex is middle, midpoint. Um, well, I shouldn't say it's the midpoint. It's, it's um, halfway. between the roots. Now, I mean that directly in terms of um, real geometry in the case that x plus and s, when we're in cases one or two, when these are real numbers. But when it's complex, it's still actually true that that's an identity. Um, and also, what are, what are x plus or minus here? Well, these are the, um, you know, these, these, what are these? In terms of our usual language, the solutions to this, these are the x-intercepts, right? They're the x-intercepts of the graph. What's the y-intercept? Um, well, that one's easier. That's certainly, I could have said that any time earlier. y-intercept is at 0, comma, c. All right, so this, this is pretty much... These are the high points geometrically of what a, the quadratic, the graph of a, a parabola looks like, OK? Um, I mean, if you wanted to be more sophisticated, you could talk about the so-called direct, directrix of the parabola. But let's not do that here. Um, so let's see example. So I believe this is the example four. Let's look at y equal to you know, x squared plus 8x. Um, you know, minus 9. All right. Let's figure out what the graph of this looks like. So this is um, x minus 1 times x plus 9, right? And let's see, you're going down the list. It opens up. Um, what, where, where, is, where is its axis of symmetry? is at, you know, I, I said that's at x equals to minus b over 2a. That's also where the vertex is. In this case, it's minus 8 over 2, which is minus 4. Not sure I believe that, actually. That feels wrong. Let me check on that. Minus b over 2a. 
B is 8, A is 1, minus 8 over 2 is minus 4. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, it's fine. So the x-intercepts, where are they? You've got one at, at, uh, at, at um, 1, 0. And you've got the other one at minus 9, 0, right? So minus 4 actually is halfway between those. Um, all right, so here goes. Oh, where's the vertex? So the vertex, we plug in, um, oh, my bad. Let me figure the vertex out first. Vertex at, well, minus b over 2a, we already worked that out, minus 4. And I'm supposed to do c minus b squared over a b squared over 4a squared if I trust my formula, and I think I do. So that's minus 4. Let's see here. c is minus 9. And then minus what? b squared. Ooh, 64 over 4. Well, 64 over 4 is 16. Minus 9 minus 16 is minus 25. So we've got minus 4 comma minus 25 is my vertex. All right. So I better make sure my, my vertical scale is um, generous enough to account for that. All right. And um, all right, so here it goes. And my, my y-intercept is minus 9 as well. So I think pretty much everything interesting happens here below the x-axis for this one. So I'm going to draw it like this. Um, I'll put uh, let's see here. So I'll make my outstretched hand 10 units. So this be minus 10. Down here, minus 20. Right. So basically, the bottom of the board is uh, is at minus 30. All right. So this would be minus 10. This would be 10. All right. So let's let's plot this. What goes on here? So the axis of symmetry is at minus 4. So that's about um, it's. Oh, right there. So I'll make a blue dotted line for the axis of symmetry. Vertical line. And um, let me plot the curve itself in yellow. It's got, let's see what points are on it. It's got minus 4 comma minus 25. About right here is the vertex. Vertex is down here. It's got, um, let's see here, x-intercept of 1, right? and also minus 9. And what else? Oh, it's got a y-intercept of minus 9, so that, that puts, pegs it about right here. It has to be like symmetric about the axis, so there's another dual point over here, kind of, roughly speaking. So anyway. I can't. <laughs> oh well, I tried. Jeez, I think it's way too steep for me to do it justice. So anyway, I'm up to the very questionable limits of my artistry. It looks something like this. There's a picture of y equals to x squared plus 8x. Um, minus 9. All right. Yep. Let's see here. Let's uh, 
Let's graph another one here. Example five. So let's look at y equals to minus three times x um, minus two quantity squared um, plus, uh, let's say six. All right. Now, if the equation looks like this, this is actually what's already in, this is, this is in what's called vertex form. See, if the equation looks like this, I can read directly from this that the vertex is at um, 2 comma 6. See, because if I plug in 2 into this equation, it makes that 0 and we're left with 6. And that's the, that's the largest this quantity can ever be. Notice that here a is equal to minus 3, which is less than 0, so it's going to open down. All right. Now, it's not immediately obvious to me what the zeros are of this one. So let's see here. Let me work that out. We've got um, y is equal to 6 minus 3 times x minus 2 quantity squared. If I factor a 3 out of that, I get 3 times 2 minus x minus 2 quantity squared. All right. And then I can look at 2 as the square root of 2 squared and use difference of squares. So this is 3 times the square root of 2 minus um, parentheses x minus 2 times the square root of 2 plus x minus 2. Um, so long story short, what we got here is 3 times, you know, let me factor a, um, let me factor a minus out of this one. So it's minus 3 times x um, minus 2 minus the square root of 2. And then here we've got x minus 2 um, plus the square root of 2. So this altogether shows me x-intercepts are at x equals to 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. I can see that from this factoring here. Now, of course, the other thing you could do would simply be to multiply this out and figure out the a, the b, and the c use the quadratic formula, and you could also get the x-intercepts that way if you wanted. All right, so let's put it all together. Um, maybe I, what is the, what's the y-intercept of this? Y-intercept, I should probably get that too. Y-intercept, we put x equals to zero to find that. So if you plug in x equals to zero, you get minus three we get y is equal to minus 3 times minus 2 squared plus 6, which is minus 12 plus 6, which is minus 6. All right, so try to put it all together here. All right, so we've got y-intercept of minus 6. And... the vertex is at 6. All right, so I... I think I can make everything work on a scale of 6. So here's 6. We'll find out if I get it. Here's 6 that way. Minus 6 down here. All right, what's the axis of symmetry? Remember, axis of symmetry is halfway between the roots. So um, if we do x plus plus x minus divided by 2. When we add the two roots, the square root of 2 cancels, and we get 4 over 2. Well, oh, I'm a dummy. The, the, the axis of symmetry is 
going through the vertex. So um, let's see here. So roughly speaking, x equals to 2. There's your axis of symmetry. Um, the vertex here is at 2, 6, so that's here. All right, square root of 2 is about 1.4. So 2 plus the square root of 2 is about 3.4. So 3.4 is about here. And 2 minus the square root of 2 is about 0.6. So that's about here. All right, and it's got a y-intercept of 6, minus 6, which is right here. So it seems like I've doomed myself to drawing another very, very, very steep parabola. So poor, poor choice of, if I'd been smarter, I would have made my um, horizontal scale um, a little bit more tightly zoomed in. And so that would have made the parabola fatter, but oh well, I did what I did. So there's the graph. I've, and I've included on the graph the vertex, which is, of course, the maximum value that y takes, right? As well as the x-intercepts. And um, the y-intercepts. So if I had a student ma make a graph of a quadratic and include the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercepts, I would be very pleased. Um, yeah. So anyway, I hope that helps you understand how to graph uh, parabolas. I, I think um, probably the problems they have in the homework are not quite as structured as this. They probably give you like a picture with a couple different choices, and you have to select which equation matches which graph. And that's also good. And you can use all of the things that I've shared with you here to do that. But anyway, uh, it's been a good semester. So um, I think uh, going forward, unless there are other questions, I think that's pretty much about it. Um, there might be, I think we'll have a review for the final if, uh, if people are interested um, next week. But uh, the, I believe the take home test is the next thing you guys have, um, which I'm supposed to publish Monday. And I want you to turn in to me in person on, on Wednesday, if I recall correctly. So uh, I think I said that in the last video. So anyway, thanks guys.